Specula and friends building banjos, auto harps, or just plain carrying on the folk music tradition in a most entertaining fashion. Well, Goose Acres is a music store which is devoted strictly to folk music uh, things. We do have uh, instruments uh, here, guitars, fiddles, mandolins, banjos, dulcimers, auto harps, hammer dulcimers, a lot of other smaller, lesser known instruments that are strictly devoted to the area of folk music. Uh, there are maybe, oh, a dozen or so uh, shops throughout the whole country that uh, pretty much specialize in the folk instruments uh, rather than general music. Well, folk music, uh, I think you can kind of define that as uh, music for folks, more or less. <laughs> I think that's probably a good way to do it. Uh, we make banjos and auto harps here. Uh, and virtually all of the uh, things that we do to those instruments are done right here in this location. Uh, we buy very little outside parts. We start right from big raw wood planks, which may be you know, up to four inches thick and anywhere from eight to 16 inches wide and been sitting in our back room drying out to stabilize for several years. And, uh, well, to make a banjo, basically what you do is you take one of those pieces of wood and you cut away everything that doesn't look like a banjo, and what's left over is a banjo. <laughs> but to maybe get a little more complicated, uh, on a banjo there are two parts to the banjo. One is uh, essentially the head uh, assembly, which usually consists of a wooden ring with some kind of a metal interface called a tone ring, and then a either skin or uh, nowadays mostly a plastic uh, head is put onto this and stretched over it and then the neck is attached to this and the strings run across it and uh, then set this head vibrating and this is what makes the sound. get into doing some very fancy inlay work. Here is some inlay work that was done. This is a necking process. All of the rest of the clear areas on the pearl uh, still will need to be engraved. Also what can be done and what was done a lot of times in some of the better instruments back from the 50 or 100 years ago is that carvings were put onto the bottom end, the so-called heel of the banjo. Typical people, there are people interested in the traditional types uh, of music, you know, folk music, uh, who want a decent quality instrument and uh, we are one of the few people uh, who do that. There are maybe another half a dozen makers of instruments like this uh, in the country. Well, my background uh, is, uh, I was basically uh, went to school to be a research physicist. I was living in Boston uh, back in the 50s and uh, late 50s and early 60s, the big folk revival swept the country. And I heard some banjo music, uh, you know, Earl Scruggs and Bill Keith and people like that. And I decided, hey, this is good stuff. I gotta learn to do it. So I went out and bought me a banjo and started to learn how to do it. And then over the years, uh, I learned to play various other instruments and uh, pretty much anything with strings on it nowadays, I have some knowledge of it. The people that uh, are here with me, uh, I have Dan Levinson, uh, who is I guess you could call him our sales manager. He actually comes from Pittsburgh. Then other people that are here uh, in the back, 
building, uh, primarily right now working on building auto harps, is uh, Dave Rice. He's a superb harmonica player, uh, also plays auto harp and uh, guitar and fiddle. I uh, have also Tom Kelly, who is apprenticing on uh, instrument repair, which is done here. We work on repairs of all kinds of uh, instruments, primarily trying to stay in the acoustic area rather than the electric uh, instruments. And then uh, the last recent, most recent addition to the crew here is Jim Thomas, who uh, was a machinist, uh, mold maker, die maker, and uh, his uh, expertise in the music area, he got interested in music from the Revolutionary War era, and uh, was pretty much a stickler both in terms of, you know, when he performs uh, costume and also particular instruments he plays and the way they are played back as close as he can get it back to what was done 200 years ago. I grew up in Oklahoma, in the transplanted Oki. I came here to this part of the country for a, a job that I no longer have. And during the time that I, I came here, I became interested in old time music and, and auto harps in, in particular. Auto harps actually, especially one with 21 chords, it's, uh, it's a pretty flexible instrument. Uh, and there are a lot of keys you can play in, and not only a lot of keys, but a lot of runs and passages that you can play even within a, a fairly common key because there are so many other, other uh, bars on the instrument which will allow you to play those notes. If you, you divide out the length of time I've been here and the number of harps I've put out, it ends up about a harp every 1.7 weeks. But we're gonna we're gonna get it down underneath that. I became involved in folk music because I thought it was the most fun kind of music that there was. I've been playing since five years old, started accordion lessons at age five, been playing ever since, learned to play the guitar when I was in high school, and got into playing fiddle and Irish bazooki and things like that, and I think I'm right, it is the most fun kind of music, at least for me it is, anyway. I do most of the metal shop work and, uh, and all of the tooling work here. We build all of our own tooling to make the manufacturing process easier and quicker. In the auto heart department, we need very accurate pieces of felt cut that go on the bottoms of the cord bars. And this morning, I was developing a fixture where we would put the strips of felt and the little scallops provide indexing for the knife guide so that those can be cut very accurately. The, the strings are spaced a quarter of an inch apart and if you have very much error in the little felt pieces that form the cords, by the time you get across the width of the auto harp, you have part of your strings not working. And this is something to avoid that problem, and it's adjustable for the varying widths of felt as we need it. Now, there are many, many so-called inexpensive beginner's instruments around that are virtually impossible to play and sound even worse. And... Uh, tend to turn people off to music. And this is my idea of what ought to happen to these things. I've uh, been playing music probably since a little bit before I can remember. I grew up with music in the house all the time. Uh, my parents played, my mother played guitar a lot, my dad called square dancers. Folk music, if, if I look at it from my personal standpoint, is you know, it becomes a type of music that's not plugged in or anything. You know, I don't, it's a real simple, basic way of playing and doing something that you can take with you without any problem. I mean, when, when our band goes out, we don't need any plugs to, uh, to get going and get playing. 
and it's uh, it's a very community oriented music. We'll have a dance once a month up in a uh, community nearby here, and afterwards we'll have people over the house, and some of these people we've never seen before. Uh, it's it's not just the music; it's folk community. We have a, an old time and bluegrass jam. Uh, more, probably more generally a folk music jam. Different types of people will come down where we'll sit right here in the front of the store and just play music for a few hours and, until Father Goose throws us out, you know. Just, uh, there'll be some old time going on here in the front and some of the bluegrassers back in one of the workshops and some of the Irish musicians and singers will come in. Every so often we'll get people who just like to sing and play, you know, the singer-songwriter types and they'll take a room here or there. And we just come down and play and have a good time. Nineteen ninety, I think, is going to bring us some interesting things on folk music. I don't think it's ever lost its popularity, but I think what's happened is it's become a little more commercial again. It's real, uh, reachable music. You're not dealing with people who are more into touring than they are into meeting the people. Our band will travel around, and we travel because we like to go and play and have a good time and meet people. And we're just as happy to have a party later on after meet afterwards and play with other people who we just haven't met as we are to sit on stage and play. So, uh, I think it's got a real nice future in the 90s. makes you want to tap your toe and slap your knee. And after listening to that music and the people who play it, I think folk music can best be described as a time and place. The time long ago when frontier families branched out all over the United States. The place, their final destination, home. <laughs>